Scientists at CERN just made a qubit or a quantum bit using antimatter for the very first time ever. And it's kind of mind blowing. In this case, they use an antiproton, which is the twin of a regular proton with an opposite charge. A classical computer bit can only be found in a zero or one state, but a qubit spin can be up down or anywhere in between all at the same time. This is what makes quantum computers so tricky to not only measure, but control, which is why this study is making headlines because this experiment was able to show an unprecedented level of control over this antimatter qubit. Here's how they did it. Scientists trapped a single antiproton and got it to spin in two different directions at once for 50 seconds. Now that might not sound that impressive, but in terms of quantum physics, that is incredibly long. Most qubits in actual quantum computers lose their quantumness in milliseconds and it gets way more interesting. This experiment is part of a bigger project called BASE, trying to solve an even bigger question about matter. Scientists think matter and antimatter should behave identically, like perfect twins. But our universe is almost all matter with virtually no antimatter. But per physics, there is absolutely no reason why there should be more matter than antimatter. This is one of physics biggest mysteries. Where did all the antimatter go? Protons and antiprotons both have an electric charge that pull in opposite directions, kind of like a magnet. It's called the particle's magnetic moment. Certain scientists have theorized that protons and antiprotons magnetic moments may not be equal, which could explain why matter won out over antimatter in our universe. But why does any of this even matter? Well, because creating a quantum computer out of antimatter qubits might be worth building if there does turn out to be a difference. And this is for a few reasons. The CERN experiment showed antimatter qubits could stay coherent for 50 seconds. So longer coherence equals more time to do complex calculations before the quantum effects break down. Antimatter particles are also naturally more isolated from most matter, which could mean fewer random disturbances that mess up quantum calculations. But all of this is very theoretical because antimatter is currently the most expensive substance on this earth, about 25 billion per gram. And we just made the first antimatter qubit. Now imagine making thousands to work in a quantum computer. TLDR, we're nowhere near an antimatter quantum computer and sadly even farther away from the Star Trek curvature engines. If you know, you know. If you're into this video in quantum physics, then you don't want to miss our long form video on YouTube at the end of this month. Make sure you're subscribed and go check that out.